Number 15. Clown Prank Another recent and terrifying trend around October has been the presence of clowns. Last year in Florida and California, people would dress as clowns and hang around the city just staring at cars or pedestrians in city streets. Some of the creepy clown enthusiasts would even pop up on their neighbor's security cameras doing things like staring silently, playing with balloons, and violently destroying pumpkins. This year, the trend is more widespread. Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Texas, Florida, Kentucky, and New York have all had reported incidents involving clowns. These clowns have been popping up more and more, and even worse, they've become dangerous. Several incidents of robbery or vandalism have occurred in the Houston and NYC area. South Carolina had an isolated incident where children report a clown near a wooded area trying to lure them in with stacks of cash but a suspect was never apprehended. In Kentucky on September 23rd, a man sporting a clown suit was actually arrested in connection to these strange clown sightings. 20-year-old Jonathan Martin was arrested for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. A passerby reported a terrifying clown near the woods, staring at cars as they passed. When an officer arrived on the scene to assess the situation, Martin ran from him, clearly aware he was in trouble. It's uncertain exactly what charges Martin will face, but officers are investigating his possible connection to clown crimes in the area. It's uncertain why this trend has become so popular. It started as fun and kind of scary, but it's boiled down to just outright dangerous and terrifying. Number 14. Upside Down Here's another horrible senior prank that makes you wonder how the prankster assumed he'd get away with this one. In 2007, a Palo Alto senior on the baseball team, 18-year-old Daniel Marchant, allegedly had some plan which involved his upside-down 1994 Volvo in the center of his campus's front courtyard. The Volvo was placed on the campus around 3.30 a.m. on a Tuesday morning but police never caught information on how it was tipped over. They suspected that others were involved in helping Marchant assemble the prank, but nothing was caught on campus security footage and he wouldn't admit to others assisting him. The car was upside down, missing its hood, all of its tires, and was spray painted multiple colors. Among this, the license plate was removed and the VIN number on the windshield was scratched out. On the car, a message was spray painted that read, Fizz or die which was allegedly a reference to the use of ecstasy. In addition to this car prank, the teen attempted to cement a toilet to another location on campus, but the cement didn't dry in time and the area was easily cleaned. The car caused about $3,000 worth of damage to a wooden deck it was placed on. The teen was arrested and spent seven hours in county jail. To the surprise of many and to the favor of Marchant, the community was outraged. You'd think that spending a night in jail would teach not only Marchant, but his peers a great lesson in not performing pranks, or at least that's likely what the school board hoped for. Instead, the community came together, made shirts, viral Facebook pages, and held bake sales to raise money to get Marchant out of jail and pay off the amount due in damages. This star athlete not only accomplished his prank, he got away with it without spending a dime, and with a newfound popularity. Number 13. Swatting this term comes from the action of someone hacking into 911 systems and tricking a SWAT team to raiding an unsuspecting person's home under either false threats or false danger. This can also be accomplished by simply calling in a fake hostage situation. A 17-year-old self-proclaimed prankster from Canada was proven responsible for at least three separate swatting incidents. The unnamed boy made several phone calls to several high schools and city hall locations in the US, mainly in Florida. He threatened that he was a 30-something adult male and was going to drive to the school or schools in a black jeep and kill students with an AK-47. On a separate occasion, the young boy called the local police in Winter Haven, Florida. He had allegedly been talking to a girl online and she rejected him romantically. He decided it was a great time to put his swatting skill to use. He claimed that he was the homeowner and he was going to shoot his wife and their two children. A SWAT team, several ambulances, and even a canine unit arrived at the home. The teen girl and her parents came out of the home confused, but the young girl quickly realized what had happened and explained the boy's swatting history to authorities. Floridian police communicated with Canadian forces about countless incidents that they believed the teen was guilty for. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police surrounded the boy's home, arrested him, and confiscated his computer and cell phone. He admitted to several accounts that they believed him at fault for. As for the numerous other such circumstances in the US and Canada, some evidence was found on his devices that led police to believe he was chargeable for. 
Of course, when questioned, the boy explained that everything he did was just a prank. He claimed that he was a prankster and it wasn't his fault the 911 system was so faulty. While more information on his charges were never made public, we can safely assume his excuses didn't hold up well in court. Number 12. School Shooter In a similar incident as the previous, a 14-year-old was arrested on September 29, 2016 in relation to a threat to shoot up his school. The teen who has remained unnamed apparently made an Instagram post in which he threatened to shoot another student over some dispute they were in. The post also stated that some other students may also become targets. The boy allegedly claimed that he had a list of people he would shoot. The post was deleted merely an hour or so later, when he received a negative response from his followers and those tagged in the post. It's uncertain who reported the post to police, but through the help of social media companies and fellow students, they were able to obtain the name and address of the teen who made the post. Once word got out that he was wanted, he turned himself in and was charged with threatening the safety of his fellow students. He was released to his parents several hours later, possibly on bond, but is set to face his charges in court. He claimed that the post was a joke or prank, and it was proven he had no access to weaponry. However, law enforcement and school officials take these threats very seriously especially with the current state of mass shootings occurring so often. It's strange to consider that students actually think they can make such serious threats and no one will take action. Number 11. Cricket Prank Zeta Pugh, an online prankster and self-proclaimed actress, has been performing and posting pranks for nearly four years as she says. This particular prank shows a homeless woman, portrayed by Zeta, holding a bowl filled with 300 crickets and 300 worms on the D train in New York City. She begins shouting, they're a quarter each, I need money. I'm selling this! Yo, what is that? What is that? I need money, as others that are in on the hoax harass and tease her, at one point her co-star pushes her over and even punches her. The bull goes flying into the air and all the insects are released on the train. People attempt to swarm away and avoid not only the bugs, but the confrontation that is now occurring. She screams at passengers, hits her co-stars, crawls all over the train floor in an attempt to collect the bugs, cries, hyperventilates, slightly vomits, and apparently even urinates on herself. The police show up and get the situation under control, but many passengers are forced to exit as law enforcement and train employees sort out the situation. Zeta was taken to a local hospital to be evaluated for mental illness. She allegedly didn't break character until she was forced to give her personal information, which revealed she was not a homeless woman trying to sell crickets. Officers said she could be charged for reckless endangerment, lying to officers, and disrupting the peace. Zeta has since posted several things on social media trying to excuse the stunt. She said it was an art piece in the form of a prank, made to bring awareness to the daily struggle of homeless women. Nonetheless, most people are outraged at how careless she was for the safety of others, and how she left a huge grotesque mess for the train workers and city health departments. Whether or not there was a deeper meaning to this wild prank, it's likely it could have been carried out in a safer and cleaner way. Number 10. Senior P The tradition of senior pranking goes back literally centuries. Senior students in their last year at high school, college, university, or even technical schools spend the last week or so pulling practical jokes and intricate pranks as a way to leave their mark on the school. The tradition, also known as muck-up day, is a well-loved and well-planned ritual that is passed down from generation to generation. Senior pranking has almost become a competition, each senior class trying to get more wacky than the last. Many schools in the United States, Canada, and Australia have implemented new rules and even district laws to strictly prohibit or regulate senior pranking. The often fun idea of causing chaos amongst the campus has now been shot down by administrators and law enforcement. Maybe it's with good reason, though. Pranks have been getting more dangerous each year, and you never know what a student will try to pull. In this case, the prank played on 62 students from a New Jersey high school in 2014 wasn't dangerous at all. It also wasn't very well planned out. And as far as a prank goes, it was pretty pointless. 
The teens broke into the campus in the middle of the night and trashed nearly every classroom and office on campus. They tipped over desks, shredded important documents, broke windows, greased door handles, set up streamers and balloons. The best, or actually worst, part of this prank is that they also peed all over the hallways. Apparently, the big bang of this prank was that the group made large, long puddles of urine throughout the major halls of the school. They were arrested for felony vandalism and trespassing school property. If they were going to get arrested for a prank, you'd think that they'd have a better plan than just peeing on everything. Number 9. Clown Facebook Another trend in relation to clowns that has happened to several high schools across the U.S. are clown Facebook pages. Fellow students create a Facebook page with a creepy clown profile photo and make threats towards other students or the community. Most of the threats are clearly playful, not dangerous, and not taken very seriously. This trend was taken too far when two girls in Fresno, California were arrested due to threats made on Facebook and Instagram from profiles made to look like they belong to clowns. A 14-year-old girl created an account under the name Joyful Randy and threatened to shoot up her high school. She was arrested and could face felony threat charges. Another young girl was arrested for the same thing directed at Roosevelt High School. When arrested, she cried that it was only a fun Halloween prank. Yet, another student posted to Instagram as a clown threatening to place bombs at their high school. However, that particular suspect is yet to have been apprehended. Both girls that have been arrested will face felony terroristic threats and could face up to three years behind bars for what they rationalized as a prank. These incidents led to a serious drop in student attendance on both campuses as parents feared for their safety. This being said, police plan to crack down not only on the threats made by students, but on all clown-related reports. Number 8. Homicide Everyone has that friend that loves joking around a little too much. They never seem to know when they've crossed a line, and they don't think about how badly a prank can really go. A couple in Nuego, Michigan are the picture-perfect example of that jokester friend. On April 3, 2012, the pair invited over mutual friends for dinner. They planned an elaborate prank where the husband would lay on the living room floor in a pool of effects blood with a fake bullet hole to his back. They planned that the friends would come in and see the gruesome scene, and around that time his wife would come into the living room in a frantic while holding a fake pistol and pretending she had killed him. This was a very complex, belated April Fool's prank, and it all went horribly wrong. The friends came into the home and saw the husband on the ground, screamed and immediately fled the scene and called local police. Four separate police units, emergency medical services, and several news stations were alerted immediately and set up a perimeter around the home. Officers demanded that anyone in the home walk out, backwards with their hands in the air. The couple did as they were instructed and it was apparently a shocking sight for those on the scene to see a man with a bullet hole walk perfectly fine. After they were approached and frisked, they explained the situation to police but were still taken in for questioning as their home was searched. They somehow blamed their friends for not getting that it was just an April Fool's prank, and they said they could have at least told us they were calling the law. While no more information was publicized on this matter, officers said that the couple have faced serious charges for wasting police time. Number 7. Fake Hanging Randy Wood of Rural New York played a very dangerous prank on his ex-wife in April 2004. Randy created a very flimsy, very dangerous makeshift harness, which he hung from a mid-sized limb on his tree in order to prank his wife into thinking that he had hung himself. He called her and asked her to come look at something he got her. Before she arrived, he managed to climb the tree, settle into the harness, hang a noose, and wrap it slightly around his neck. So many things could have gone wrong during this. It honestly wasn't a miracle he didn't actually kill himself. His wife showed up and took no time before doing what most people would do and called 911. Several cop cars, ambulances, and fire trucks were sent to the scene of the alleged suicide. Once responders arrived, however, the situation was already pretty clear because Randy was yelling down at his wife and officers about how it was just a prank. The fire department did help him down, and the EMTs did check him out because he was arrested and later faced charges in relation to a fake emergency, which could cost him a $1,000 fine and a year in jail. It's pretty uncertain what he planned to accomplish with this, and it's a little confusing as to why he chose his ex-wife, but his plan fell apart. He should just be thankful that his setup didn't. Number 6. A Prank Addict Perhaps the oldest form of pranking is the prank call. 
Before cell phones, caller ID, email, and YouTube, the best way to get a great laugh was to call someone up and ask the age-old question, is your refrigerator running? Prank calling has been popular since the early 50s and has even made a name for itself in shows like The Simpsons, with Bart's constant prank calls to Moe's. With modern technology advancing more and more, it's kind of nice to know that people out there can still enjoy a good old fashioned prank call here and there. This girl seems to be more of a prank calling addict though. A man was arrested for prank calling New Brunswick police and reporting that a woman was going to be raped by an armed kidnapper. This led to several police units and a SWAT team showing up to the home. When they realized it was all a hoax, the number was tracked down and an arrest was made. A Texas woman named Fatina Ward was found to be connected to this joke. When she was taken into custody, she admitted to countless similar crimes and told police she just couldn't help herself. The call started when she joined an online chat where people would report fake emergencies to other people's addresses and watch the news to see how many units, officers, or SWAT members would show up. The person with the most points would win the round. According to Fatina, it all started as a game but she became carried away with it and was making the calls at least daily, even when not playing the game. She apparently got some kind of excitement out of it and just couldn't control herself. While Ward was in custody, numerous county police departments called in to report that she had made calls to them as well. Ward had made up to as many as five calls in one day in Union, Belleville, Texas, Pennsylvania, and South Carolina. It also came to light that roughly eight arrest warrants were out for her and that she was a registered sex offender that failed to report her new address which resulted in her bond being revoked. In 2006, roughly a year after her arrest, an FBI agent was assigned to investigate her calls to see if they were in relation to some unsolved reports which claimed children were taken as hostages, but police were given an address to an abandoned ranch. It was never publicized what charges she received, but it's almost certain she served some hefty jail time. Number 5. The Chair in the Road There have been plenty of pranks or jokes that directly have led to the death of an innocent person, which will be mentioned later. In this case, a prank caused by an officer to be run over by a drunk driver, and the prankster went on the run for months. In 2007, two teens had what they thought was a great idea, to cause a little disruption on a small Florida highway. 19-year-olds Tyler Jenkins and Katie Peller sat a lawn chair in the middle of the highway in the dead of night. There was no apparent reason for this, other than to get a laugh out of the idea of a chair sitting in the highway and someone having to get out of their car and move it. Well, that person forced to get out of their car was 58-year-old Sergeant Carl Strossel. He was driving in an unmarked police vehicle going down the highway when he noticed the chair. He likely thought it had just fallen out of a passing truck and pulled over to move it before it caused any serious disruptions or collisions. Just as he was exiting his car and heading towards the chair, a 19-year-old drunk driver was speeding down the highway, didn't see Strussel, and accidentally killed him. The driver was arrested on the scene, and Strussel was pronounced dead. The teen responsible was charged with driving under the influence and driving with a suspended license. Unfortunately, there were complications in the evidence that prove he caused the death, so he was not charged with manslaughter. Some argued that the officer had been hit before the drunk driver showed up to the scene and he simply ran over an already dead body, but others highly doubt such a far-fetched concept. A year later, investigations into social media and local security concluded that Jenkins and Peller had left the chair in the road as some sort of prank. The two had learned of the officer's death and were avoiding police basically on the run, until their arrest in January 2008. It's a depressing thought that these two not only caused the life of a devoted officer to be cut short, but possibly ruined the rest of their own lives all over a plastic chair in the middle of a highway. Number 4. Wendy's Prank There's nothing wrong with being a loyal employee. Many admire a person's ability to take orders without question and follow any rules put in front of them. In this case though, a little disobedience among staff could have likely saved the Wendy's fast food chain several thousand dollars. 19-year-old James Markell from DeBoll, Texas was arrested in September 2009 and charged with one count of terrorizing and one count of felony criminal damage to property after he was found directly responsible for $20,000 worth of damages caused to a Wendy's. Markell called the restaurant and spoke with the manager. He pretended to be an employee from the corporate office that was appointed to help the manager check some safety regulations. 
Markel had the manager test the store's fire suppression systems, or fire extinguisher, to be sure that it was up to date and ready to use. He, of course, instructed the manager incorrectly and caused the extinguisher to go off and spray thick foam all over the back of the restaurant. Markel then instructed that all employees evacuate because the foam was fatally toxic. Once the entire crew was outside the restaurant, he instructed that everyone break the windows to avoid any further damage from the foam. Employees used rocks, brooms, and their bare hands to break out the windows in an attempt to salvage what they thought would be a terrible damage. They didn't realize that the only damage being caused was by them. One employee was hit by a shard of glass in the neck. Markel told the manager that someone would need to urinate on his neck in order to prevent poisoning from the foam. Thankfully, before anyone pulled their pants down, a deputy arrived to figure out why employees were breaking the windows of their workplace. The manager put the deputy on the phone with Markel, and the deputy refused to talk it over the phone and insisted that someone from the corporate office be sent down. Once Markel hung up the phone, it was clear the whole thing was a joke. Through investigation, officers found out that Markel was part of PrankNet, where several incidents like this had been caused by immature, self-proclaimed pranksters. Markel was arrested and admitted to the Wendy's incident, as well as at least four similar episodes in Texas and Louisiana. Markel could have faced up to 18 years in prison for crimes of terrorism. Number 3. Stop Sign Prank Yet another example of pranking leading to someone's death. 19-year-old Steph Stoner Rock didn't think much of the prank when he did it. He thought it would cause a little chaos but claims he never imagined anyone would get hurt. The prank involved covering a stop sign with saran wrap, toilet paper, and petroleum jelly. It's a little uncertain how he thought this wouldn't cause any harm as the stop sign was located at an intersection which was known to be pretty busy. The immature prank led to the deaths of 85-year-old Mary Spangler and 81-year-old Jeanne Shea. They were sisters riding together to get lunch. Jeanne was driving her vehicle when she passed the covered stop sign and collided with another passing car. Mary died on the scene and Jeanne was forced to face 11 surgeries over a few days until her body gave up and she died in the hospital. The families of the two women were outraged at the ignorance of this teen's prank. The women were elderly but were said to have been in great health and could have lived as long as 10 years. When solely considering the information on their health records, Seth was arrested in connection to the prank and was charged with two counts of involuntary manslaughter. It was clear the teen did not clearly think through his actions and felt deep remorse for causing these two women to lose their lives. Number 2. A Gun Prank Gone Wrong In August 2009, as the school year had just begun, two Purdue University students were arrested for murdering their friend. 22-year-olds Corey Lynch and William Cauldron were drinking and joking around with a gun that they assumed wasn't loaded. Their mutual friend, 21-year-old Landon Sela, was also playing around with the friends. Reports claim he was not one of the trio messing with the guns, but that he had been drinking. Apparently, Corey and William pointed their guns at Landon to scare and joke around with him. They both joked that they were going to shoot him and counted to three. Both Corey and William pulled the trigger, thinking that nothing would happen as the guns weren't loaded. In Corey's case, he was wrong and the gun was in fact loaded. The 45 caliber handgun shot Landon in the neck and killed him immediately. The terrified friends called 911 immediately and were taken into custody for questioning. Corey was charged with reckless homicide and pointing a loaded firearm, while William was charged with pointing a loaded firearm and false informing as he provided the gun to Corey. While this was just a stupid joke on tragically wrong, it's a great lesson in taking more precautions when using or handling firearms. Number 1. Prankster Kills Coworker in early 2006, 25 year old Joshua Martin played a prank on his co worker. The two were EMTs and had a little time to waste before going back on the clock. Martin thought it would be comical to prank his co worker by jumping out of the back of their ambulance and shocking her with the defibrillator. The shock caused her heart to stop. Martin tried to resuscitate his 23 year old co worker, Courtney Roton, and sped her to a nearby hospital where she stayed in a coma like state for three days before dying. Martin cried in court while apologizing to her family. He claimed he didn't know the defibrillator was set to such a high voltage. He was charged with reckless homicide and sentenced to five years in prison, only one of which he served before being released on parole. Thanks for checking out this countdown. Leave a like so we know you made it to the end. 
be sure to subscribe because we upload new videos every week. My name is Chills and I hope you enjoyed the narration. My Twitter is at YTChills and my Instagram is at DylanIsChillinYT. I'd really appreciate a follow and feel free to send me a DM if you have any comments or suggestions. See ya.